Good morning, and welcome to the Jits of Time Camp Specchio Week 4 Extra Credit stream. I am joined in the commentary. I am Rithrix, and joined in the commentary booth by Akuhaish. Hello, everyone. Today we will be, re be running a seed uh, with duplicate characters, a new flag we haven't seen before in Camp Specchio, gear randomization, and boss randomization. The seed also has a prohibition against having rolled Luca or Ayla, so we will never have access to attacks such as Flare or Triple Kick. With that said, let's get right into it. Starting in three, two, one. We are starting with Marley, who is replaced by a frog, and Chrono, who is replaced by Marley. Fantastic. We'll have access to King's Trial, fairly off the bat. With this restriction in characters, we'll have a bit more tactical thinking to go with them, to worry about. However, the opening is very similar to, in comparison to race flags, very similar. All my groceries off the bat, that's impressive. Yeah, that is impressive and really nice to get to. Yeah. Means fewer things we have to worry about later. Chrono Trigger at Snail Stop, that will come in handy and we'll take make a note of it later, but that doesn't mean that we have 10,000 more gold to play with. Yeah, and it's not something you can use right away. Indeed. Now if it were Gate Key or Pendant, then we might want to do that. But it's not. So far, we haven't run across a piece of modified gear, but item rando, or equipment rando, as you will see it on the GUI, is a flag that modifies the bonuses given to given to different items or and equipment throughout the game. Robo's ribbon, cool, handy. Each I each equipable item in the game, with a few exceptions is capable of having a stat boost and a special effect shuffled around them. So, so for example, you can get you can get a sword with a stat boost of plus two added to it if you if you're lucky enough, which can stack with every other stat boost that you're that the character is capable of equipping. Which is quite handy. Let's see if we can... Let's head into the shops and see if we can find a piece of gear that's been modified in such a manner. Most of the time, accessories will not be modified, but... Ooh, here's one. The Tabin Vest. Ordinarily, it has resist... It has 56% uh, fire resistance and plus two speed, so it can only be equipped by Luca. This time around, it has been rolled such that it only gives the fire resistance. This is denoted by the minus sign at the end of the kit, of the item's name. If the if the item was modified to have a buff, then it would be note then it would be having a plus on the end. And if it is modified but unable to determine exactly what the buff is, yeah, we can use that. If it has been modified, but you're unable to determine what the buff is, the last character of the item's name will be a question mark instead. No, I will not sell you the pendant. Thank you. 
So with this demon hit that I just purchased, ordinarily it has plus 1.5 hits versus magic enemies. That has been taken away, and since it's been taken away, the name has been changed to denote that it has a, few, a lesser benefit than normal. Every, almost every item in the game can be modified in such a manner, and it, and it bears repeating that you should look over your equipment before equipping it, as opposed to just going off of the name, because now it's changed. Yeah, like now we can get Doom Blades, <laughs> Doom Guns. Yes, the rather exciting <laughs> ones from endgame equipment. For example, which includes the key items such as uh, the Grand Leon, which can be modified to have a different, different weapon effect. And the, and the, the Rainbow is capable of getting into a Wonder Sword, for example, which is one of the more fun one, more, one of the more fun items to get whenever you whenever you roll a seed with item rando. Very similar opening in the beginning. Not much to say beyond that. Grab your text and grab your text and make a decision of where you need to go based on what you have available to you. Too good to text starting off this time around. You got that nice, awesome white mage Marl there. <laughs> yes. So let's go grab another character and see what we have to work with this seed. a screen clearer, this fight has to be done the slow way, which is unfortunate, but rando will rando at times. Yeah, neither slow way or not, it's, it still gets done. Indeed. who was initially Robo, so we'll have access to the desert check if we so choose to go after it. And with Chrono's amazing hit rate... <laughs> it will be easier to get... to... get enemies down, yes. I'm we'll talking about... Or we'll just watch him, you, you know, miss everything. <laughs> yeah. That's why he was given confused, so he has four chances at missing. As opposed to just one. <laughs> Ooh, a Ruby Vest Plus. I wonder what buff it rolled. We'll have to look Ooh. at that when we get into our menu. Ah. 
Mesomail Plus, and another Mesomail Plus. So at least we have our chest armor sorted out pretty soon. So, as you can see, the Ruby Vest has kept its original buff, kept its original effect, and added plus two magic. Since not, since Marley doesn't really have anything effect offensive to use, we're going to put that on somebody else. Gear randomization is usually a little bit easier than standard race flags, simply because you have a higher quantity of buffs, but that doesn't mean that rando can't, uh, rando outside of your favor. Yeah, you can get those nice endgame effects with on the early game items to a less to a lesser degree than one might think they are buffs are restricted by i believe item tier so you can't get say rain, say the rainbow's high 70 percent critical strike rate on a wood well wood sword is i don't think ever changed anyway by items so no that might actually be the case haven't seen one before but you won't be able to get on something like a dark saber. Because the end game equipment is handled specially. The rest of the items are handled with, with a single set of rules. So while you can get some very, very nice things such as oh plus five speed plus two speed on earlier equipment, it's not guaranteed, nor it is not guaranteed to do so. <laughs> I'm all in going Wonder Mop for a challenge seed. That would definitely be interesting. That would be, and the mop is always available in every seed. Yeah, all you have to do is go over to Lab 32. Yep. More specifically, Crisis Effect is decoupled from only the Crisis Arm Kiyokatsuki. The ability you're capable of rolling the ultimate weapon effects on any of the ultimate weapons, and Crisis still functions as expected. It runs off of the last digit of your HP. It's just that it's attached to a different weapon, so the efficacy of which is debatable. Unfortunately, we have, we're not late enough in the game to have found any ultimate weapons yet, so we won't know that until we get there. Now one thing is, because we have boss rando on, and we have no idea what's at the other end of that door, we should review what we have available before we, get, before we continue. Now, I have a Luminaire, but I don't really be able to use that if I don't have to. So, we're going to take an extra fight here and get Spin Cut for us. Not that it will be particularly effective with a Wood Sword, but better than nothing. Dual tech of sword stream. I'll come in handy.
So saving the second save slot, or really any other save slot than the one that you're keeping main track of your game in, is a good idea at the end of a dungeon just before the boss. In the event that your team as assembled is incapable of dealing damage to said boss when you don't know what the boss is. So we're about to find out which one that is from Yakra. Or the Chancellor, I should say. And it is a Nisbel 1. Fun. At least we have a lightning spell to deal with this. Yeah, lightning will just make this be a breeze. Indeed. You know, if my teammates are capable of hitting the boss. Nisbell gets stopped in his tracks by any lightning attacks and will then discharge it later. Easy enough to abuse when you have a high, when you have a high damage output, which is something that could be helped by purchasing a weapon from Melchior at the beginning of the game. Chancellor to get by, and then we'll head on over to the castle and see what happens. Who will be our princess today? A frog who is now a chrono. Fantastic. I wonder what text they will have. Oh, we might be able to see dual chrono. Entirely possible. Uh, if that is the case, the dual tech for mirror match chronos is Chrono Cross, amusingly. It's a buffed <laughs> up X Strike. That, because it's X-Strike, cannot miss. And if we run into Retinite, that's going to be incredibly handy. Ooh, Spin Cut and Spin Cut. Yeah. It, Chrono Cross requires Spin Cut, so... Goodbye, Marley. Goodbye, Marley. Should probably go and see if we can find another weapon for, cro for our Chronos if we want it to actually be useful. Alas. If I had taken note of what was at the fair earlier, that would have been nice. <laughs> A flint edge. Do I have anything I can sell? Sage Bell works. And the prices of the items are affected by the buffs or debuffs that they get to. Correct. The item prices in the seed will be affected, assuming that you're using non-completely random shop pricing, which is a flag that we have not seen yet in Camp Specchio and may not. Uh, the prices of the, fl of the items are modified by whether or not they have been buffed, debuffed, or changed. 
so for example, if I if the if I want that demon hit from earlier was a lower price because it had its plus 1.5 times hit from mag on magic enemies removed. Which me which was helpful because then I could actually afford it with the starting money. Let's see what Xena is. The pendant. Yeah, that's something we keep. Yeah, that is. Hopefully we'll always see. keep that. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yes. <laughs> as far as the boss rando goes, it, we have no idea what's going to be at the end of this bridge. And the only thing it cannot be is Nisbel. So we have no idea what's coming up. Fortunately, we also have fi both physical and magical damage available to us. So no matter what we do, no matter what we run into, we should be able to damage it. Which the combination of duplicate characters and boss randomization has a tendency to make, has a tendency to make very interesting party composition choices. With the fact that we have Luminaire, with, it, with the fact we have both Luminaire and Chrono Cross available to us, I'm not anticipating anything that we don't need, that we don't, that we cannot run into here. If it were, say, if we didn't have a magical tech, I'd be really nervous about running into something something like Hecrant, Giga Mutant, or Terra Mutant. But fortunately, that's not the case this time around. Is that my inputs game? No menu glitch this time around. We're going in. No, we're going in blind. Guardian. Now this is one that I'm really glad I have Luminaire for. Oh yeah, Luminaire would be nice, and X Strike is really nice too. Indeed. As far as Guardian is concerned, the as far as Guardian is concerned, you need to destroy the bits, but otherwise they will counterattack. And fortunately, a screen clearer such as Luminaire is ten has a tendency to kill them very quickly. And easy enough fight. Black vest, that will come in handy. I suppose now is a good time to mention that the elemental males, such as the black vest, the blue male, red vest, red male, etc., will not have their absor elemental absorption shuffled about. However, they can have stat boosts, such as plus two speed or plus ten hit applied to them, and their prices will be adjusted accordingly, as well as their name. So if you see a black male or red male, you can always guarantee that it will be available. So we have the pendant, we have access to Denodoro, and that. Mm, we have desert available to us. Does Marley have ice two yet? No. I don't want to, but let's go do Hackran. I'll get us some early game. I'll get us some early tech points. Unfortunately, all of our characters at the present time have no access to magic. Uh, require access to magic in order to learn all of their texts. And that means that going through Hecran's cave isn't going to be the greatest of moves in the world, but it will at least get us everything that we need. 
So, with that in mind, let's hit ease it up on the one character that actually has a screen clear. And get started. And another thing to note is the rocks are a little bit more accessible or nice in this mode too, where they can roll a random effect. Indeed. In addition to granting the access to their associated triple tech, rocks are capable of granting a of granting a bonus as well. If they are noted as such, they will have a plus in the name just like every other item. Which means... Which means that as you pass by them when you might ordinarily skip them, you might want to pick up the rock items just to see what they are. And the only one that cannot use the rock or any rock is Chrono. Indeed. But then again, Chrono also gives access to every other triple tech in the game, so maybe he's just kitted out with rocks and that's how he trains. Lightning 2. That will come in handy. One thing to note, duplicate characters that, that are mirror matches of each other, such as Chrono Chrono or Robo Robo, have fewer techs available to them than, than the non-mirror match ones. So having a duplicate in your team can be, hel can be very helpful in the very specific circumstances that boss requires, but is not guaranteed to, but may fall flat when you have to consider a well-rounded team. For example, Chrono, Chrono Chrono has only Chrono Cross available to them, regardless of what other duplicate dual tech, whatever, regardless of what other techs they have. The only exceptions to this are Marley and Luca, who respectively have two duplicate dual techs with each other. So Mar Marley Marley has haste all and Marley Marley has haste all and Luca has protect all in addition to glacier and point flare. I wonder if we will see gl see that glacier and point and haste all this seed. Well, we got three more characters to find. That we do. Unfortunately, we also only we would also have to go through uh, prison in order to unlock the protodom character, which I am not particularly confident my teammates are capable of doing at the present time. Probably could be done after we're done with this dungeon. And Ice 2 is learned, which means Desert will be also be fairly easy. Right. Let's see what the boss is here. We know that can and it is a slash. Is it super or regular? Super slash, okay. Here's Chrono Cross. Sex strike. It's handy. That's a bit of a fast. That is a bit of a fast, yes indeed, counter, so. We shall see. Am I glad that you chose to hit somebody else? <sighs> that 
That was a fast speed. That was a fast super slash. So what will we get from Tabin today? The Bent Hilt. Part 1 of Magus Go Mode, part 2 is Frog, and the last one is the other piece of the sword, so... At least we will have... At least we'll have progression in that regard, but not immediately useful. So the tech point to gain from doing Hacker and Cave was not the bad, was not the worst of ideas. So here I could go to Desert, Denodoro, or others, and I think that the best option is simply to go to the future and see what we can unlock for another character. I don't really have enough information to make a determination of the exact of the exact correct play, so may as well make the correct play. And hope it pans out. So, with boss randomization, there's a few bosses in the game that are never shuffled. And Dragon Tank at the end of prison is one of them. So what so when you're going through prison, you'll know you'll, al you'll always have to deal with the dragon tank, which means that lightning and fire magic are no bueno. However, we don't have access to much else, so we're going to have to we're going to have to go through it with physical. And with Gear Unlike Rando, would you loot a little bit more in prison? There's about one check that I would do, and I may as well do it today. So that would be the Omnichrome check that is a bit out of your beaten path, but we're early up enough in the game. I think it's I think it will pay out easily enough because the that's unfortunate the chests in prison are the same tier as the chests in the other dungeons in the future so it's not a bad idea if you're look if you're low on gear to go hunting for that very rarely seen spot here and the guards weren't dropping anything useful so knock it out we have a red vest oh that Two red vests. I think I'm set for Son of Son. A flint edge and a flea vest. So, while the payout wasn't great this time around, it is going to enable me to just go straight to Son of Son. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. So this time around, it was great. Cute Katsuki asking when it's ready. When it's okay to save Fritz. Uh. In this particular seed, without act with some techs that cost a lot of MP, no matter who I use, it's worthwhile to go and grab the crits for the mid ethers and just grab them before go mode, and see what we can get. So that that way we don't have to we don't have to burn ethers all willy nilly in combat. I need so, a sign saying, you saved Fritz, go get your mid ethers. Because I always <laughs> forget to get those after saving Fritz. Yes, the. There are, in fairness, there are a number of things that. There are a number of things that, the, that Saving Fritz just gets shoved under the rug by, such as collecting all of the gear from the, from the sealed chests and checking the other three checks in the future and the character in there. this time around we have chrono we're going to save fritz because we can it's the right thing to do it's almost like 
save the animals or save the frames. Indeed. On the other hand, saving the frame, saving the frames. On the other hand, saving the frames here loses you some mid ethers. So. Yeah. Since I do have luminaire and luminaire, and that's going to be my principal screen clearer for most of the for most of the early game, if I need the damage, then I may as well grab the mid ethers just to keep fueling that. As always, if you're not certain that your team of duplicate characters is capable of killing a boss, save and save on a different save slot just to make sure you can roll back in the event that something goes horribly wrong. Though that brings me to another point. Consum even with one character doing damage, consumables can carry you a long way past them that you might expect, so it's usually not impossible to kill something if you can't if you don't have the right tool for the job. Yeah, I've gone through some fights with Confuse and the other two throwing ethers at Chrono. <laughs> Indeed. Let's focus on the head for now. We're not going to get any splash damage available to us no matter what we do. Correct. A new. Correct, Ageless. This is a. This Chrono Cross is a reskinned. Is a reskinned and buffed X Strike, meaning that it will do more damage than vanilla X Strike between Frog and. Between Frog and Chrono. Oh, that animation is slow. And down goes Dragon Tank. What precisely did we get? A Siren Minus and a Demon Hit Minus. A pity I don't have a second frog to use that with. On the other hand, I could probably sell it for gold and get another Flint Edge from Elkio if I really had to. Let's see what we can pull during with the sealed chest before we make that determination. Yeah, there's lots of sealed chests to look at now. Indeed. Going to the future cutscene. Duplicate characters always give me a nice chuckle whenever you see the animation glitches.
consumables in a green dream. That might come in handy later. Dark Helm, and a mid ether. Not bad. Speaking of mid ethers, next time I go to 1080, I should, bring, I should go poke Fritz. Good thing this shop had ethers, so it's basically the one consumable I really wanted at the present time. Always save before entering Soft Lock Dome. Oh, sorry, Protodome. <laughs> Fortunately, with Chrono being available, we have access to lightning magic, and that means that robots take extra damage from it. So if nothing else, the factory may be a good play just to not have to worry about losing too many tech points. And it's another Chrono. Hmm. Wonder if this one has ex has extra good techs. As always, re respect Soft Lock Dome, and don't check until you get outside. Yeah, go in, get your character, and leave. Life, Lightning 2, and Luminaire. Nothing I don't already have access to, so... Let's go get things ready. Let's go get magic. I don't want to deal with not having magic for much longer. So this particular skip, Moon Skip, functions by gathering up your party members and then leaving before the slime hits the ground. So gather up your party members by by wobbling back and forth in front of the computer, activate the computer, and then dash out the door. It's handy. You no, it. dual chrono does not give super volt, but ro having two robos does. Indeed. Dual two robos will have the dual tech of super volt between them. Both of them will require shock in order to use it. And that is the only dual tech that duplicate corona duplicate robos share. The only duplicate tech that duplicate dual tech that chronos get is the aforementioned chrono cross, which useful, but not a screen clearer. It is, however, because it's because it's a dual tech cannot miss, so. If you're running into Resonite sometime, it might be worthwhile to keep that in the back of your head. White mail. That might come in handy later if we have to fight Nithvel too. So we want to shock him three times. boss coming up, the R series, is also one that, in boss randomization, is not shuffled at all. So, you will never see R series outside of here, and you will never see bosses that are not R series inside of here. Which is a good thing to know when you need magic like I do. 
but the R series do take on the palette of whoever Robo is. They take the sprite. The palette is the, their own. The, yeah, the sprite is what I meant. Yes. Which, if you're here and haven't found Robo yet, there is that is a sneak preview of who he's going to be. Which could inform your decision if, to go and get said character, if at all. Ooh, a demon edge. I'll come in handy. Which could inform your decision to go hunt down the last character if you haven't already. Going and getting magic because I'm nervous about not having it. I'm going to laugh if some of the sun turns out to have the gate key. Uh, whatever boss you do now, you'll gain tech points for. True. Hence one of my major concerns about coming here early. With the lack of gaining tech points, any and all tech points that you would have gained from get, from doing battles don't exist if you don't have magic unlocked. And that's of more importance if you run into duplicate characters simply because that it has a higher chance of having of not having uh, characters that don't need magic, for example, if there's no robos in the party. If there's no robos available, then you're if there's no Robos, Ailes, or Lucas, sorry, Magus is available, then you're going to require Magic Unlock to learn past your three techs, and the faster you get here, the better. So while it is a decent time commitment, it can be it can turn out to be handy if say gate if gate key isn't found very early. Yes, Specchio. So with that in mind, it's time to start thinking about what characters do we want to take to the end game. For example, we could take Ayla, who has the highest level in stats, but doesn't have the best attacks yet. Nobody does, but of them. I think I should kick the frog out of the party. Bring in a different, bring in a different chrono. Yeah, this can work. It'll give me an. Uh, it'll give me the ability to use. Ice Sword 2 with either of my Chronos whenever they learn uh, Confuse. And also. And also allow us to use Chrono Cross to pour some single target damage in for when we run into those nasty, nasty Levo spawns. So this boss, Sun Palace, is also randomized, and it's the other slash, so this could be a bad thing. Yeah, this would be an endgame slash at this spot, too. Mm -hmm. Still, it's not impossible to do. Unfortunately, he's also immune to ice, so Chrono is forced into the role of is forced into the role of support character. Yeah, this slash also has higher than normal magic defense. Indeed, and completely immune. 
it is completely immune to the to ice, which unfortunate. Let's get some re-races going out on this. safety granted to me by re-raise, I can afford to take a little bit, to be a little bit, uh, less cautious about my, about my tech usage. Because even if we, even if he does counter unexpectedly, they're gonna get right back up. Like that. <laughs> Zombie strats are indeed a good thing at times. Not that it seems to be particularly useful at right this second. Let's see if I can get some extra damage out. The item targeting the routine is capable of getting back onto Frog. This is taking a very long time, but it's something that demonstrates exactly what you may be expected to run into.
that of a very suboptimal matchup for the characters that you possess. Ah, he's got the counter counter speed. Countering. Definitely a good time for life or revives. Or in this case, re raise. <laughs> yeah. Re-raise, they go down, come back up, re-raise. Indeed. Especially with a especially with a boss that loves to do counterattacks such as slash or or in some cases flee. Re-raise is a godsend. Since he's doing this, since he's now into his counterattack phase, the best plan, the best course of action is probably to just use two characters to support one. At least then all the counterattacks will be focused on that one character. And there we go. That fight demonstrates that no, regardless of what matchup it is, it's usually not impossible to achieve. And it was the clone, so good piece of go mode. I'm not going to complain about that. So now would you go and get that as your go mode or if I knew Try... where the chrono trigger was which I think mm -hmm. was in uh, snail stop so I have to go refresh my memory it was a snail stop that would explain why I'm going there then yeah not enough cash now that's one that you don't normally see Due to the la due to the pre-known, due to the fact that we know we don't have Luca or Ayla available, we can sell any and all guns we get. They're not going to be useful at all. <laughs> I love it when the guns give power. Yes, that's mildly silly. <laughs> so, with that, we are now in go mode, and it's a fairly early one. I am glad that I have already unlocked magic. Let's go pick up those mid ethers. I have, in fact, grabbed the trigger again. I think. Yeah, that might actually be a bad thing. That would be embarrassing if I went to Cuba's dome and got told go get the trigger. Still, an hour in and we have go mode. Better than nothing. Better than a slower go mode. So. This team, I'm fairly comfortable in taking to the end game because Marley will be able to pair with either Chrono, meaning that either Chrono is capable of performing the Alchemist role on any given turn. So having that available means that we don't have to worry too hard about execution order of turns. And since... Ice Sword 2 is so wonderfully powerful against Zeal 2, that's another thing we don't have to worry about.
May as well let the new sleep. So with this team of Marley, Chrono, and Chrono, we have access to almost all of the night of the extremely nice things that we that we want out of party. The requirements being uh, screen clearer. We have Luminaire, handy, and single target damage. We'll have confused by the time we get up there. I hope. Hopefully, it's not last. So, with that out of the way, we can get. We can basically state that we're all that we're ready to go with this team, because the two major ones that you need are those two. And I want some extra gear, so I'm gonna go grab the chest on the left of here. I think that was a mistake. Sonic Arrow will come in handy in the event that we have to worry about uh, single target damage. Such as for labor spawns. Or in some cases, Mother Brain. Since we still don't know where those two bosses are, it's worthwhile to think about what we need to overcome to defeat them. Just slightly too early. Oh well, that's fixable. A silver stud? That's gonna go on the first chrono to learn Confuse. And I think Confuse might be the next one of one of your chronos entirely possible. I'll have to do some review back at the at the uh, next save point, or the next time I open my menu, really. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it next, like, the fourth tech of one. Indeed. I forgot which one it was. Let's, try, let's find out. That one's Cyclone, that one's Confused. So it's, with this particular team, it's probably a worthwhile idea to actually grind up a bit at the at Cracker Waterfall just to get the tech available because this is a fairly early fairly low level run of death peak yeah it's more that you don't really have too many techs indeed levels i'm okay on Not normally something I'd stop and grind for, but Confuse and therefore Ice Sword 2 is worth it. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's silver earring. We don't want that. A bit unfortunate that our screen clearer Lumineo does not does not one shot these. So some animation time, but worthwhile investment at the end, I think. Provoke, cyclone, and confuse, and ice sword too. Fantastic. That's all I really wanted to grind for, so we're gonna go. I'm gonna have to pick up shelters after this, but that's fine. Let's see what boss this is, since we've saved. If it's something untenable, we can always reset. It should be fine, though. Yeah, you should be fine with whatever's there. Yeah, even after he gets his double... Even after he gets his double damage, it will be fine. From being below half HP. So... Masa immune, because he's here in this spot, his stats and, and health have been scaled up, but he still follows the same mechanics as if he fought him on uh, Denodoro Mountains. The This particular one will probably do about 250 damage per slap when it gets down to 50% HP, which is something I'm going to have to look out for and make sure everybody's above that. And otherwise, it's continue spamming Ice Sword 2 for, for lots of damage. Ooh, 172. That's not bad. And again, it is on a Chrono that has better armor than the others. I think at this point, it's going to be Ayla turns into Alchemist. Or the fight could be over. That works too. Yeah, fight being over is always the best way. <laughs> Indeed. Push the Spirit of the Blade. Climb the Spirit of the Blade. Death Peak cutscene will open up the Black Omen for visiting in 12,000 BC, 600 BC, AD, and 1000 AD. Just, that's how you get to Black Omen.
with that, the final dungeon is available to us, so let's go do some extra, some shopping before we head on in. Nothing particularly worth caring about in that shop. Let's get some revives at the shelters. We have two chronos, so num so we can skimp on revives if we really want to. Shelters, however, don't. We already have our mid ethers, so we're just going to grab this and hit get going. The good news is that because we have a screen clear that will actually kill them all, we don't have to worry too hard about the laser guards. Especially on a fast character, so we don't have to hope that we survive their initial barrage before we get our screen clear off. Coming in here at a at level 20-ish, is not the bad idea to grab every fight that gives good XP and tech. Such as the goons fights. Unfortunately, with no access to Lucas or Ayla's, the usual strategy of, for, of burn it with fire does not work too well. But fortunately, we do have ice magic to back it up. Every enemy in the Omen is vulnerable to fire, but they're also vulnerable to, to ice. So it's worthwhile to keep in mind what your... what... ah... Uh, characters you want to bring into the omen at the end of the game, should you get this go mode. Panels here have 750 HP each, so you need to have a screen cleared to kill them before they get their nasty attacks off. Fortunately, Luminaire is doing just enough damage. So 
so meeting that threshold is a mild is of mild importance when we're moving to the Black Omen. And let's see if we can grab a couple of these. Came in here with fairly low quantity of tech points left uh, available. May as well. May as well grab a few of these boss orbs and sidekicks. Assuming that my characters don't miss. Yeah, I always like trying to get one of these sidekicks down. Indeed. At least we got one of them down, so that's going to be a nice chunk of tech points. Though, frankly, with that. That's useful. Definitely useful. This one we're just going to skip. We don't. We already have Ice Sword 2 on both of my chronos. The, that's basically the only tech that, between them that we really, really want. So Aura World isn't horrible. Those metal mutants, I fear, because they do a lot of damage. And they're fast. See how lucky or unlucky we get on the elevator on the elevator today. Slasher 2 Plus. I wonder what has added to it. downside of coming here coming into the go mode early 
ish. So you don't have much to sell. We need one amulet at minimum, just in case we're going to do something that can give status effects. Bit of a disappointing new shop, but such is life. Ooh, 60% stop. Yes, please. I'll come in handy if we have to fight, uh... Golems. Mega Elixir will come in very handy during the final boss. So... That fight was worth taking for the extra tech points. Terra Arm Plus. A pity we don't have a robo to use it. about this fight. Not much to say about this endeavor at the moment, just going through Omen as efficiently as possible. Since we don't have Luca, we don't really have any full screen uh, clears that affects everything in the Omen. Fire is the best, more with flare, but water also works on everything. Indeed. We have water, too. 
we have water, it's just that water isn't that effective against it because it doesn't, doesn't have that much damage behind it. Yeah. Which is an interesting note when playing with duplicate characters, just your text, your favorite text will not be available sometimes. How do you how do you overcome the challenge without them? With this being the last fight, before, with this being the stretch before the boss in which there are no encounters, or at least there aren't any if you skip them, the it's a good time to think about what do I need to do to prep my team for whatever the next boss is, and to think about what your previous bosses you've killed have, and therefore this one can't be. So, because boss rando prevents you from running into the same boss twice with the exception of the Ocean Palace twin boss spot, you can use your list of killed bosses of what you cannot run into again. In this particular case, I know it can't be Slash, Super Slash, Nisbel, or Guardian. So I know I still have to worry about uh, single target or magic only or status protection. Speaking of status protection, ooh, it's Retinite. That'll be handy. So, one thing about dual techs, especially physical ones, they can't miss. So if you are lacking in, in water magic whenever you fight Retinite, you can, use, you can use a physical tech such as Falcon Hit or X-Strike or Chrono Cross to bypass the defenses that Retinite has available. I will admit, uh, having Chrono Cross and Ice 2 makes Chrono Cross a little bit redundant, but it's better than nothing. up is very, very bad. Legs seems to be picking on Chrono a lot. And this is why we grab those mid-ethers. <laughs> really picking on Frog. Yeah, it really is. I 
Ah, that's unfortunate. Can't win all of them, unfortunately. Ooh, another Mega Elixir. And Aura at last. Unfortunately, with uh, with Marley being relegated to the role of Alchemist, there wasn't much she could do in that fight besides being Alchemist, so using her in that manner maximized her effectiveness in the fight. Oh, wow. This was a good elevator seed. Only one fight. Yeah, that is really good. I usually get a total of three fights. Yeah. I would say that it's about average. So if I remember correctly, which fights you get are random, but not the order in which you get them. Because I want some tech points, I'm going to intentionally take this fight. Pretty sure that these two are going to be close enough to hit with a single ice sword too, so let's go find out. And that is correct. Cool. Haste specs. Now there's a Ooh. example of the ultimate items gain change. This was originally prism specs and originally had the plus 50% damage. They have been changed to grant haste. Haste is wonderful. Haste is absolutely amazing. And it's absolutely worth a accessory slot. Yeah, especially if you get a helmet to pair with it. Like... Like something that protects you. Indeed, a status protection. All depends on which bosses you fight. I I think it is unlikely that there will be a status effect boss in anywhere left in the Omen. It's not impossible, but of the bosses available, there... Mm, yep, this is a point at which we really want that single target attack. Yeah. And if... More so if that one person is hasted. Yes. Speaking of, may as well reset and put it back on. <laughs> yeah, that's something I like to do in boss rando is go in, check the boss, reset, gear up for it. Mm -hmm. Always a smart move to do, since Frog is the one with who currently has our Confuse. Speaking of. Oh, Confuse is last on Ayla. Fantastic. Well, I guess that means that we know exactly what we're going to be doing for the rest of the game. Oh, 
do not be afraid to reset if it's bad if it's a bad matchup for your current equipment and, and characters. Just evaluate the time that it will take to get back to it. Ouch. I guess we know that the that aura will aura whirl will be going out from Marley and from Chrono and Ayla. Lavo spawn absolutely loves to do lots of lots of AoE and other things that hurt. Currently, Chrono and Ayla are in somewhat of a dangerous predicament, simply because we don't know what the boss is going to do next, and it loves to target things that target allies that have low HP. So hopefully, it will attack either Frog or Chrono, but if they attack Ayla, I've got backups. Or they can just attack all of it. That works too. change on a dime, it is highly recommended that you learn the capabilities of your team before you, so that you can recover from things like this. single tech, but one makes do with what one has. And boss is dead. Always good. Dash ring. Not like haste, but it still gives a lot of speed. Indeed. And prism helm question mark. Yep. So this is an example of what it will look like when the game doesn't know if the effect that was that was given to the item is better or worse than the item than the effect take that it had in vanilla. So Prism Helm, it does not offer status protection, but instead offers plus ten magic defense, which given that we're going up against Seal 2, who only has magical attacks, it's not a bad idea to put that on.
Plus, we did get a Black Rock Plus, so let's see what it is. It says Dark Eternal and Barrier, so it's going to give me a, she a uh, damage reduction shield for against magic. So that's going to be handy. That was one reason why you should check the rock chests anytime you're nearby them in Gear Rando. Because they can roll very nice effects. Hmm, flea. Now is it Super Flea or Flea Plus? Sorry, regular Flea or Flea Plus. Flea. Fantastic. And I think I forgot to shelter. Oh well. Cross spam might be of assistance here, but it's of lesser assistance than just spam and confuse. Does less damage. So I'm pretty sure that regular plea is not in frost. Barely more than that. from the boss's AI script. Let's get Ayla buffed up and pasted. Oh dear. This could be problematic at this point. And that's why you respect the bosses. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, flee at later spots is really bad. Oh, yes. Like, I'd almost rather see Dalton Plus. I don't think I'd go that far. But this does tell me that I haven't actually committed my tabs yet, and that's a bad thing, given that I've gone through basically most of the game. Yeah, almost would rather, because with Dalton Plus, you can mitigate the counterattack. In fairness, if I had used my shields, I probably would have lived through that, but at least on at least one character. Fortunately, I have Green Dreams, Re-Raise, and Haste available, so as long as I actually maintain said buffs, it should at least one stair counter should be acceptable. Your Kale asks if this is a Chrono who, is re who has been replaced by Marley. That is correct. Exactly one shield. How unfortunate. Oh, 
Oh dear. Fortunately, I think all of my characters are capable of, rit of resurrection, so... And we got lucky and got the next hit off, question mark? Not enough to kill you, therefore it doesn't matter. Since we're now in Flea's counter-attack phase, it's worthwhile to use Ice Sword 2, even if it's slightly less efficient damage-wise, simply to get pa simply to reduce the number of times that we get countered. Probably just used a consumable heal there, but why not make it? Why not get him up to speed? Nice Gary fight got uh, through and and now it's only up to the final boss. Well, uh, that's bad. And because I can, may as well use that dash ring for at least one fight. Since we're fighting ZO2, we want to be protected against water and shadow magic. It's not necessary. Plus, uh, lightning magic isn't bad to defend against either. Now, here's an example of that speed, ec of that extra bonus into action. The Dark Helm, the Sight Cap, excuse me. Plus, has plus one speed added to it, so I could use this in the helmet to affect who goes wet, who goes how quickly in battle. Just if I needed to, if I needed to get back through some more non-boss enemies. At least somebody will survive the hexagon mist if we get that far. And we always hope to never get that far. Of course, but sometimes, as demonstrated with that slash fight earlier, you make do with what you have.
Oh, that's a nice meaty ice sword too. Let's finish it off with Chrono Cross for fun. Yet, otherwise you run into a fight unprepared. That's bad. That's about as good a loadout as I'm gonna get, so may as well take it. With the Mammon Machine, you have to do 10,000 points of damage before it goes off. And I think that I can outpace it with this team. And hope I live through it. Alas, no Luminaire, and I think the energy release is about to happen, so let's get some extra magic damage in. Oh, just barely didn't outpace it. Ouch. That's why you should always make certain that if you are actually going to go whole ham, you commit to the task. Fortunately, all of my characters are capable of pressing, so who cares. Pity we can't use it because we don't have a menu glitch between Zeal's two uh memory machine and Zeal 2. See if, he, if she kills Marley right off the bat, it'd be the smartest of moves for her. Oh, I think that she did. Nope. Lightning. Okay. Because I have two of them, I'm just gonna pop a Mega Elixir and get back to it. And get back into the fight. So far, Zeal is being fairly cooperative. We'll see how long that lasts. I 
I should be passing the Halation Threshold and HP or 10,000 points pretty soon. There's Halation. Gotta get everybody back up with a Mega Elixir. Just make sure nobody dies in the interim. Buster, just peel it back up, and it's golden. And time. That was duplicate characters in Race Flags with Boss Rando. As you can see, almost no challenge is, un is insurmountable. Just, you have to ask yourself the questions of what can I do with my team? So Aku, do you have any questions or insight to offer? Assuming Aku's still in here. He is not, unfortunately. So, with that, with this in mind, duplicate characters throws a wrench into your usual thinking of how you are going to overcome whatever challenge the game throws at you, simply by reducing the quantity of tools available to you. They have duplicate dual techs have a few that can mitigate the issues that duplicate characters brings. Not much else to say beyond your tools are different. Learn them, use them. Ah, uh, in any event, that was the run. Have a pleasant rest of your night, everybody. Or morning, in this case. <laughs>